There you go. A bit of the old vistula here and the flood plain. Just south of Chev, looking back up at Chev, that way. Nice bridge. Nice and wide view. got Malbourg. See some some of it here. The main castle, which is the big tourist attraction would be over in that side and I think you can just see it glinting between the houses sometimes. We've got a grill bar over there and it's taken up all the the view space of it. Mistletoe up there in the trees, like gave big natural decorations. Bit of a cute because it's Friday night. Oh, there's the castle. I don't know if I'll get a very good look at it, but we'll see what happens. We're obviously going over this river now. Quite an imposing site, one of Poland's best, and very interesting. Right in 300 meters. Very interesting architecture. It lies on this river Nogat. So just to give a bit more perspective, let's have a look at the Nogat in that direction. Looks very pleasant as well. And this, this tower looks over the no gas. Take next oh. right. And there's got this, this funny tower here. Right, p p pointing up towards Grujons, which regular viewers will remember the name of that town well enough. Two kilometers. It's quite nice looking, isn't it? Very Germanic. Even little details like this Tudor timbering on the side of that odd and disused bin and there's that little architectural bit of fancy work on that house as well which is just a normal food shop and there's a church with a bit of an onion style dome thing on it so my old book's got, it's got plenty of stuff to look at a lot of it red brick which I like because it's British a lot of things in England are done exactly that red brick. I don't prefer to have red brick covered in plaster like they seem to in a lot of the places on the continent. I rather like red brick left in its own natural state. That's my own personal preference. So these places that do it more, well, have that kind of architecture, appeal to me naturally. Whereas that doesn't have any appeal to me, this thing here doesn't have any appeal to me. That has much more with the bricks. And a house like this, I mean, even if it needs a lot of work doing on it, the one there over there on that side of the road here now certainly has a lot of charm for me, yeah? Even though you would say it needs a lot of work doing on it. And this looks really lovely. 
this one here, big look like an old Victorian school. And it's got a sign on the side saying if you want to ring and that number you can get you can hire a room in it for your office or whatever that's it as an accounting company. Prepare to keep left already in using eight hundred meters. Okay. Amy is is our voice for today in the uh, in this here thing. And she says meters. Following the valley of the Nogat on that side, by the way, very flat. Just ah. Oh. You are over the speed limit. That's a Mal Malbork War Memorial. It's for the Commonwealth, actually, for Commonwealth soldiers from the British Commonwealth who died during the war. It's not very common to see that in Poland. More Poles are always whinging on about the fact that. Uh, in England there aren't enough Polish war memorials, but uh, keep left. They, they tend to forget the fact that a lot of people from the UK and our Commonwealth also died so that they could be free. And the boot is not necessarily on one foot as far as I'm concerned. Little modern church building over there. And that's about it going to have countryside now so I'll switch it off and switch it back on again later. We're going an, an unusual way back from Chev to Warsaw, not through either the main Gdańsk Warsaw Road or through the uh, Gdańsk Wurzha Road that I used to take, taking a new route, one suggested by Amy, um, which is actually the geographically shortest, which takes me through a lot of villages and things which you don't normally see at all. Right, this is called Sturm, as in keeping Sturm. In 300 meters, enter roundabout, take second exit. Sturm is a, a, uh, a city, obviously, in uh, the depths of rural Poland. In 100 meters, enter roundabout, take second exit. Looks quite pretty. from Chev there, or somebody with a big Renault thingamajig. Take second exit. That's what he means, she means by second exit, I think. Drive more than one kilometer. It's funny, when, when you say more than, in, in English, the word more than can have more than one meaning. In Spanish, if you say something like this, Luisa come más de un hombre, then you get to, uh, the, uh, the, the meaning is, uh, Luisa eats more than one man, in the sense that she eats people, she eats men, and she's eaten more than one of them. If you say, Luisa come más que un hombre, it means, that Louise meet, eats more than a man in the usual sense. She more, eats more than a man does. But if you say "mas de un hombre," it means more than one man. So that means she eats people. So it may, may make the difference between, you know, comparison of greed uh, and cannibalism in Spanish. But uh, in both cases, you would use more than in English. More than a man and more than a man does, more than one man. She eats more than one man, and more than a man does. Thankfully, we have a difference between the word one and the word an, but in Spanish they've got the one word for that. So because they've got an area where they've got one word in Spanish where we would have two, then they have to have an area where They've got two words in Spanish Prepare where we would have one. In 800 meters. That's how it all adds up. In the end, it all adds up so that you've got the same amount of ideas and things, thoughts in different languages, roughly. But the, uh, you know, where you've got something, where you've got some words do for two ideas, 
in one language, that means that you must have other areas where, you know, a uh, a, a word with uh, only um, one idea has two words to, to, to do it. You know, to, to sort of all, all adds up in the end to the same. But but uh, people learning languages have to bear in mind that words don't map one on one between languages. The areas of meanings of words. That's an interesting lake running through the middle of Stum. And the way that they link together isn't the way that you would expect it. Uh, how about that lovely green uh, avenue? Turn straight right in 800 meters. To get the best of it, I need to focus up a little bit more towards it. See the way the light hits those trees. So the moss on the bark reflecting like gorky in little hills. Got some grain elevators over there, some silos. Prepare to turn slight right in 300 meters. Okay, we're in a place called Stare Tark, Old Market, and uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to to catch. This rather remarkable. One. There's actually quite some nice greenhouses there. But Prepare to turn right in 300 meters. This piece of architecture is not exactly typical. Very nice though. Take next right. Come down there, and these stumpy sort of trees next to it. Next to this, well, I say pond, it's more of a, a small lake. These trees really get me. Very low, and although I've got plenty of film left on the card, I don't think I'm going to be able to take all that much of it. Which is a pity because I've got very nice conditions for filming. Learn which way to twist the to twist the dial. That would be a lot nicer. Oh, we're still suffering under my lack of experience with this camera, but uh, I'm sure that I'll get there in the end. How long this battery will hold out is probably a matter of I don't know if it's minutes or seconds, but it's already flashing red on me. We'll see how far. Then I'll use it sparingly. Let's see if I can get some more interesting things. Some wood planks being... Yeah. 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 Y